What's up everybody? So we're out in the shop and today we are working on the Warncliffe build. So this one right here, really excited about today's video because we're going to actually start doing some of the, the stuff that's going to turn this into a usable knife because we're going to turn it into a usable knife. Yep. <laughs> this whole entire video is going to be based on that. Now, the goal for today is to go ahead and get the handle scales cut out of this block of wood. Now, I gave y'all a choice. Should I run it to where the grain runs this way to where you see the vertical lines? Or should I run it like this to where you can actually see all the burl? And what I decided on was running it vertical. So we're gonna be cutting this into separate scales uh, we should be able to get two full sets off of this one block right here and the reason behind that is whenever we actually have these lines going up and down and then we start shaping all of the edges and start rounding everything all of this stuff is like the the burly styled stuff in here the grain is going to start creeping onto the sides and these little sections are going to end up getting smaller because so, you're going to see where they run into the actual burrow grain. So I think it's going to look really cool and <sighs> emphasis on think because we haven't done this before so we're going to just wing it. Now one of the things that I did do was I sectioned off a little chunk right here because somebody had said hey you should make a bead out of part of that for a lanyard and I thought that's a good idea. So I am going to end up making a bead for this that matches this uh, scale material. So that's going to be pretty cool. Now I was originally planning on doing um, black liners on this but I, I don't want to make it any thicker than it is. I, I want this handle to be really sleek and slim. So we're just going to go with this stabilized burl that's it no liners and then we're going to do uh black micarta pins that's it so it's going to be very sleek very smooth very simple you don't have to put liners on every single thing and i don't plan on putting liners on this it would look cool but again i want my handles to be nice and slim because this knife already feels great in the hand and the last thing i want to do is add a whole bunch of bulk onto the handle don't want to do that. I want it to be just nice, light, fast, and that's the goal behind this. So that's what we're going to do. Let's jump into this. Let's get this stuff cut down. Start getting this thing going. Let's get it. So we're going to go ahead and start this off by cutting the block down. And I was originally going to put a bead on this knife with the lanyard and I just really did not want to do a lanyard tube on this. I wanted the handles to be very sleek, minimalistic, so I just wanted the two pins. I didn't think that this knife necessarily needed a lanyard other than if I was just to do it for looks, so I decided against that. Now once we got the scales nice and flattened. We want to go ahead and draw the outline of the tang on the scales and the whole point behind this is so that as we're drilling holes and adjusting things we have a reference for where the knife is supposed to be. And once we got everything kind of positioned where we want it we're going to go ahead and put a clamp on it so that we can start getting holes drilled through the scales We're going to be using a 3 16 drill bit because we're using 3 16 black micarta pins. Now when cutting this out, I plan on going ahead and cutting as much of the excess off as possible. Partially to keep the dust down in my shop when it comes time to 
shape these handle scales and all that so I went ahead and cut as much of it off as possible save myself a little bit of time later when it comes to like I said shaping the handle scales Now I use a 36 grit belt to do a lot of the shaping on this primarily because it does not burn this wood. The higher grit you go when trying to shape the more chance you're going to risk burning the wood and then you got to sand past that and you waste material so I use a lower grit whenever I'm doing all this shaping. Now we need to get everything cleaned up because we want to make sure we have a good mechanical bond with this epoxy. So I take acetone and I wipe everything down that is going to be glued together with this whole entire handle set up. Once we got that all cleaned up, it's time to put on some gloves and get to mixing some epoxy and glue this bad boy up. And I'm just using JB Weld two part epoxy. This is a five minute epoxy. We want to make sure that we mix this up really well because the last thing we want is a, a bad bond because we didn't mix epoxy properly. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do a pretty thin layer and coat everything. Make sure we go into the pinholes themselves and all that because you want to make sure that there's epoxy in those. Partially because if you happen to have a little bitty gap because your pinhole got a little oblong or you know ovaled uh, it will fill that in so you don't have a weird gap between your pin material and your scales plus it creates a better mechanical bond in the end and I'm a big fan of putting the epoxy on everything before we actually go through and put everything together it makes it a lot easier when it comes to spreading the epoxy Now when it comes to the clamps, all you're doing is putting enough pressure on there to get a little bit of squeeze out. You're not trying to crank these down because you'll squeeze all the epoxy out and you will not have a good bond. Then once we're done with that, we're going to use acetone and clean up the area where the scales meet the ricasso. Because you will not be able to mess with that later. Now I've already started shaping the handle a little bit. I thought the camera was on. It wasn't. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and show you really what we do when it comes to shaping a handle. And I'll tell you that the key to this, and I've said this in multiple videos, is put it in your hand multiple times. Don't just shape a handle to what you think looks good. You want to put it in your hand as often as possible to make sure that everything is in the right spot. because. You can make the most beautiful handle in the world, but if it's uncomfortable, people will not want to use that knife. And typically with a handle shape like this, I would do a Coke bottle style handle. But on this one, I did not want to do that. I just wanted to do subtle contouring to make this really comfortable without doing any of the, the crazier styled handles. And typically what I'll do is I'll use a 36 grit belt like what I'm using right now and I'll actually contour this 
to about 90% done and then I'll switch to other sanders and hand sanding but I go through and just make sure that everything is positioned where it needs to be every contour is where it needs to be so that all I have to do is smooth out the lines with the other sanders Now that we got that part done, we're going to go on to the oscillating spindle sander. And this is pretty much the same as using a small wheel attachment on your 2x72, but I don't have one of those setups yet, so I'm going to continue using my oscillating spindle sander, also known as a drum sander. But we're going to use this to get inside that finger choil area and get into some of these nice little nooks and crannies into this handle and start really contouring all of the, the little areas and getting the handle exactly how we want it because I've got subtle contours on this handle and they don't stand out very much but they're there Now when it comes to hand sanding, we used 220 grit, 320 grit, 500 grit, and then 800 grit. So that's what I ended at because I want this to have a nice high gloss finish whenever I buff it. So that's why I went ahead and went up to the 800 grit. And I had some pretty deep grinding lines. so. This was one of the knives that I decided to go ahead and sand at diagonals when it came across the spine. I typically only go parallel with the spine and with the blade and I don't cross over whenever I'm sanding but on this one I needed to get some of those deep scratches out so I did end up using a hard backer and sanding across the spine on this one to get the finish that I wanted. Now when it comes time to buff, we just used a green buffing compound on a medium wheel and it brought every beautiful grain out of this handle that it possibly could. Now be careful whenever you're using something like this, especially on a blade that is really pointy and sharp like this right here even though it doesn't have an edge. It can still stab you if this wheel catches this knife and throws it at you. Now when it comes to putting an edge on it, I'm using a 400 grit belt on the 2x72 just to set that secondary bevel. And we're not really trying to create a burr or anything like that with this belt. It's purely just setting up the secondary bevel so that we can then refine it with the next belt. And on this particular knife, I went straight from a 400 grit to an 800 grit to the leather stropping belt. So this belt that we're using right now is an 800 grit belt. And this has a kind of a felt back on it, so it puts a nice convex cutting edge and makes this thing absolutely razor sharp. So with this one, we're just focusing on getting a nice burr built up. And I'm using the Windex because it keeps the belt from getting gunked up 
with steel as we're sharpening this and it makes sure that it sharpens very, very well. Now we're gonna use the leather stropping belt on the one by 30 and just knock that burr off and leave our razor sharp edge. This makes everything a lot easier than having to hand strop or do any of that. I love this belt. Here's one of my favorite tests. And then we just gotta cut through a paper towel tube. Let's see how close I can keep it to this. <laughs> that wasn't bringing it back and chopping through. I was just pushing right through it. Let's try another one. I think that'll work. Alright, so I am absolutely happy with how this turned out. And it is crazy sharp, but I mean, just absolutely digging everything about this. That beautiful wood on there. I'm happy I went ahead and went with the vertical. Because you still see all of the burl going across the top and the belly of the handle. So we've got this awesome burl wood on here. We've got our black micarta pins. I went with no liners on this because all I wanted to do was acid etch the spine and get it nice and dark again so that everything matched all the way around this knife. I really like how it turned out. I mean that is just absolutely beautiful. I mean it almost looks like a marble but we got our real cool blade finish on there where we just took it up to the 36 grit and then we etched it and then we sanded off all the high points I mean it's a cool little texture then we've got our hammer finish texture on this and then of course our nice edge on there it is super comfortable to hold I really like the overall profile of the handle I didn't go all coke bodily on this I just brought a nice taper from the butt all the way up to the Ricasso, just a nice subtle taper and then did a lot of contouring through where the finger choil is for your index finger and then get it to where I contoured all of this. I even put a slight contour through here so this main body comes back and kind of kicks down into this and then it kicks up and it just left an amazing feeling handle when it was all said and done. I am super happy with that, but I'm excited to see what y'all think about this. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna do a couple of pictures so that you can actually see what it looks like with some nice still shots and everything, but I'm interested to see what y'all think about this knife. <sighs> Man, I'm excited about it. This is a very, very, very pretty knife, and I cannot wait to use it. So, guys, that's pretty much the end of this one. Now, what's going to be coming up on the next build series? Huh. Might try my hand at doing a blade with some copper in it. <laughs> so, the next build series is going to be me doing my version of a kumai. You know, 
We've had Dennis from uh, Tyrell Knife Works and Aaron over at Ailey Knives uh, do their Kumai builds. And I think it's about time for me to go ahead and start mine. I've got an idea of how I'm going to be doing it. And one of the cool things is we are going to be using a prison mirror. So it is copper with uh, nickel plating across the front of it. But uh, it's a prison mirror. <laughs> We're going to be... <laughs> wouldn't call it a shank or anything like that we're just using part of a prison but um, we're using that as the copper now I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different with this whole entire Kumai build so hopefully y'all are excited about that I'm not gonna tell you what it is until we actually release that video but uh, Sunday's video will be the uh, explanation of what we're gonna be doing and giving y'all the rundown of what that's gonna be uh, plus we're going to have another Shop Talk Tuesday coming up where I'm actually doing a little bit of foraging in it, just like we did last uh, Shop Talk Tuesday, but it's not going to be a 40 something minute video, at least I don't think it's going to be, and we're going to be able to condense it down a little bit more and give y'all plenty of foraging time so y'all actually get to see that stuff, but I'm going to do it a little bit different so that we can trim it down to a more digestible length of video, so yeah, there you go, guys. Thank y'all for coming by. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up, share this video or one of my other videos. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of all the wonderful stuff that we have that's coming up. Guys, y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.